frequently used by an educator or an adult when they're trying to explain sort of difficult behaviors is that the child knows better, the child's choosing to do this, and it's, it's intentionally directed at me. And all three of those are, are inaccurate. You can certainly see why somebody would say that, but it, it really, that, that comes from a misunderstanding of the sequential nature of human processing and human behavior. Most of these misbehaviors that kids have in the classroom are not because they planned it out on the top part of their head and then told the lower parts of their brain, oh, go, go be a jerk, um, go disrupt class. It's because something came in from the bottom and stirred them up and shut down the thinking part of their brain. So when you sit down with them and they're calm and feel safe, the thinking part of their brain goes, oh yeah, I know better. I know you shouldn't do that. I know the rules of the class. And then an hour later, if you know the rules of the class and you are breaking them, the teacher has no other choice but to think that that's intentional because he knows better. But in fact, what's happened is it's, it's basically temporary cortical shutdown. And everybody has, an, has this in their lives, right? I mean, think about it. I, I don't think anybody out there who's listening hasn't had a moment where they were unable to retrieve something that they knew. And a classic example is if you're like with a bunch of people and somebody's talking about, well, who, what was the Academy Award winning film and, you know, a couple of years ago? And you go, oh, I know what it was. It was the one with that guy that did this and did that and you can't remember it. And then on your drive home, you go, oh, it's blah, blah, blah. That's, it's not as if the information, it was in your head. You just couldn't retrieve it under pressure. And, and that's an example of state dependent functioning, which is another one of the core concepts that we teach in the neurosequential model. All functioning of the human brain is what we call state dependent. And what that means is when you're in a state of calm, you've got certain systems open that you can use. But as soon as you start to get distressed, overwhelmed, frustrated, you start to lose access to those systems. It's state dependent. So cognition is very state dependent. You can take people with IQs of 130 and you put them in a pressure situation and their problem solving capabilities will decay to exhibit a problem solving capability of an IQ of about 105. And that's a 25 point drop literally can happen in three minutes. And it's not because they really have an IQ of 105, it's just because you put them under pressure and their ability to function in that moment was compromised. And this happens day in and day out with kids who've been exposed to trauma or, or exposed to patterns of stress activation where there's unpredictability or chaos. It doesn't have to be these extreme capital T traumas. It can be kids living in poverty, kids that, that have housing or food insecurity, kids that are marginalized or feel like they don't belong because they're immigrants or they're not the right color or not the right religion. And that will literally activate your stress response system in ways that make it keep, you know, activate and shut down the cortex. And so these kids will have a harder time in school. It all starts from a sense of safety and because of the way human beings are organized, human beings are very relational creatures. We're social animals, right? And so if you feel as if you belong, you feel safe. You know, in a, I could go into the really complex neurobiology, but the bottom line is that there's systems in our brain that are involved in helping us judge whether or not we belong or whether or not we don't belong. And if we get the sense from our peers and from our teacher that we belong, we feel safe. And when you feel safe, your cortex is open for business. And this is why things like bullying are so toxic. You know, when you're starting to be extruded by uh, other kids in your class for whatever reason, and, and the teachers may not catch that, this child is going to be dysregulated and not feel like they belong. They won't feel safe in the classroom and, and they won't learn. And it's one of the things that you know, we, we try to uh, help educators learn more about when we use this neurosequential model.